If you want to see a more detailed report of this lounge, click here. It'll be about a 12-minute walk from the Maple Leaf Lounge to F-22 where my flight departs. As you can see, the flight is so far on time. For this cross-country flight, I'll be flying on board this 22-year-old Boeing 777-200ER, registered November 223 Uniform Alpha. It was delivered to United on August 24th, 2001. This is an internationally configured plane, so it'll have the Polaris Business Class seats as well as the United Premium Plus cabin. There are three cabins, of course, with 50 Polaris seats, 24 Premium Plus seats, and 202 Economy seats. By the way, when I originally switched to this flight, it was going to be on a 787-8 Dreamliner and then switched to a Dash 9 before they settled on this 777. The last time I flew out of SFO, it was also from this gate. The line seems slightly more orderly than the last time I flew out of here, and the announcement doesn't seem so loud. One of the SFO-based passengers was right. It's kind of like an octopus with so many lines here. But we're all going to get on board, and now Group 1 is boarding. Because it's such a big plane today, we get to do a boarding. First class and passengers sitting on the other side turn left. The rest of us go straight ahead. Despite this, I like the dual boarding at Long Beach better since we get to board outside, not through a stale gate like this. Anyway, here's the Polaris class, which is United First today. And there is the Premium Economy, or Premium Plus on international flights. There's Economy Plus, and then further to the back is where I'll be. So here's the regular Economy in a 3-4-3 configuration. And I will be towards the very back of the plane, 49A, a window C. Usually on United, I get to choose a preferred seat, which is closer to the middle of the plane. But since we're pretty full today, I couldn't get one of those seats. Anyway, here's what the cabin looks like at the very back of the plane. The seats have an IFB touchscreen. You can pair that with your Bluetooth if you wanted, but I didn't do that. You also can access the entertainment on the United app on your phone. There are two power outlets shared between the three seats. The seats have 31 inches of pitch and 17.05 inches of width. So it's a bit tight. The seats have an adjustable headrest and you'll see that there's no lower back support so bring something for your back. I usually roll up my sweater or jacket to support it. That's what the seat looks like from the side and the seat will recline about three inches. That leg is not up against the wall, so there's a little bit of space there, but my feet are kind of wide, so it's a bit tight to move my foot around there. And that's one of the two windows for the view from the back. And I have a second window, which will also give me a view from the back. There's the USB where you can also charge your device, though I think it's a bit weak as I noticed it didn't charge my phone as well as it was plugged into the electric. There you can also see the plug for your headphones. Anything with a 3.5 millimeter jack will work. The air vent is a bit far away from the seat, but I'll definitely still be feeling it most of the flight. And there's the reading lights for your information. Along with your seat back entertainment, this aircraft is equipped with United Wi Fi and United Private Streaming. And along with your streaming television choices will be scheduled to your smart device. However, in order to do so, you need to have downloaded the latest version of the United app. If you don't have the latest version of the app, please download it at this time via your carrier's network. And once you're in the air, you can connect to United Wi Fi and you're not able to download it. For our guests traveling the rest of the main cabin, please do you have passwords for the Wi Fi cell site. Snacks and food items available for purchase. If you would like to purchase any of these items, You'll need to use a credit card that you've uploaded to your reservation at united.com or on the United.
1999. For instructions on how to do so, as well as paying with the QR code that my also on PayPal, please reference the Hemisphere's magazine, which can be found in the pocket in front of you, or simply visit united.com slash snapchat. Thank you, and once again, welcome aboard. It smells clean. It For your information, the center bends, the bends in the middle of the aircraft, they are smaller than the bends. On the outer part, so to make sure that you are placing the world of where its wheels first, and the outer bends, and then the center bends just place the smaller items such as laptop computer bags. Please if we do not have space for those bags, we'll check out your final destination. Take a look up there right now. If your bag sticks out, but if it does not close, put your bag in it. Is there any space right now? Or we'll check out your final destination. Thank you. So about five years ago, 2018, United reconfigured their 777-200s into a 343 economy class configuration. However, they didn't update the overhead bins into something you might find, say, on the Dreamliner, which is the Boeing Sky Interior. As you heard, the overhead bins are narrower in the middle compared to the side. I saw a lot of people struggling to fit their carry-on bags that would have had no problem fitting on a Dreamliner or even a newer 737. Why United added the seats but didn't update the overhead bins is a mystery to me. Just be aware of that if you're flying on the 777-200 and sitting in the middle of the economy. Four hours and seven minutes. Uh, possibly a little turbulence about an hour or so into it as we cross the front range uh, just south of the Denver area. And uh, planning on landing about 20 minutes early in Washington at about 8.45 local time. Uh, they had a little uh, light snow shower and some high winds earlier, but for our arrival time, uh, it's supposed to uh, calm down and uh, be pretty nice, but uh, we'll be cold, probably around 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for our arrival time. Thanks, welcome aboard. So even with the very full plane and some people struggling with their luggage and their red bins, everything worked out fine and we're pushing back just a few minutes past our 1.10 p.m. departure. towards the east. So from my seat we'll get a nice view of San Francisco and the bay. So with that enjoy the sights and sounds of our takeoff.
light, it'll get dark fairly quickly, and will arrive into Dulles after dark. I usually can watch the moving map, but I'm intrigued by the choice of programming from the land down under. So I'll be watching some of these programs. You'll see some of them a little later in the video. For a four plus hour flight across the country, the free snacks included this fruit bar, the chocolate bar you saw earlier in the other video, and a snack mix. Snack boxes are also for sale. So if you have lounge access, make sure you get in a decent meal and a drink or few. For this flight, I'll also have a cup of water to drink. And now you're seeing one of the videos that uh, I used to fall asleep. This is a video of New Zealand, uh, and there was some peaceful music playing as well. And I fell asleep for a little bit. And now we're somewhere over the Midwest. Here's a quick tour of the restroom at the very back of the economy cabin. Looks clean for now. It's a bit small, like being in a phone booth. There's a coat hook right there by the door. Yep. The sink looks okay. Doesn't look too small. Hopefully you won't uh, splash water on yourself. And now uh, we're continuing over the Midwest. I think we're over Kansas or Nebraska. a lot of programming from down under during the flight. My favorite was this cooking show called Nadia's Comfort Kitchen. I believe these episodes were filmed during the pandemic. With those announcements, we're just about to land at Dulles International Airport. Here are my thoughts on today's flight. First, it's unfortunate the Boeing 737 MAX faces another disturbing issue. Now the planes are grounded and there are tons of disruptions and changes going on. In times like this, it's important to be proactive and look at any possible alternatives or changes to get to your destination. Second, the boarding at United seems quite hectic since there are so many groups. I'm glad I'm in group one, but that doesn't mean much since there are tons of others who can board before me anyway. Next, be aware that United's Boeing 777-200s are 10 across in economy, but the overhead bin capacity was not increased. Be aware that if you sit in the middle, the four across section of the row, you can't fit as many carry-ons as on the sides. And other than that, it was a very uneventful flight in spite of an eventful situation. We are landing into Dulles about 30 minutes ahead of schedule. Luggage on this flight that doesn't get checked luggage and your travels in here 
at Washington Dulles. Those will be calling down carousel number seven. Get checks, drawers, and wheelchairs to come up to the airplane door. Your feedback is really important to us, so some of you will receive a survey asking you about your experience via email or in the United app. We'd love to know how you enjoyed your flight with us today. Once we do arrive at the gate, we ask that you please stand clear of the doors to allow flight attendants to complete your court and the flight safety duties. Finally, I'd like to say that it has my pleasure having you on board this evening. We hope the next time our travel plans are up in the air, you just don't skip fly and put the skies of United. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Joining me on United Airlines 2667 from SFO to Washington Dulles. Please remember to leave a comment and a like below and subscribe to see more. See you next time. Have a good night. Bye.